So it may be that you thought you're really busy and you don't possibly have the time to learn Greek. Well, in this video, we're gonna to talk to Meg, who is a busy mum of four, and we're gonna find out what it took for her to be able to really learn Greek. So, let's get into it. So, a lot of the time, we think that it's, it's just too hard to learn Greek, it's too, it takes too much time, and we just don't have the time to do that sort of thing. Well, I think there's some legitimate concerns around that, and we'll talk about that a little later in this video, but I wanted to introduce you to Meg, one of my Master New Testament Greek members. Now, Meg is a busy mother of four, and she also has some health troubles. And these, of course, all work together to make life kind of difficult for her at times, certainly different from the way that it may be for you and I. So this video, what I want to do is I want to ask, what does it take to be able to learn Greek? Is it possible for a busy mother to learn Greek? And what, in fact, is going to be necessary to make it possible for this to be a reality? Well, let's talk about those different questions. And the first question I want to ask Meg as we get into this discussion is really, again, like I ask just about everybody who I have on these videos, how did you get interested in learning to read the New Testament in the original language or getting into the New Testament at all? And it's a little different from every person, one person to another can be different in answering this question, which is why I ask it, because I'm always kind of interested. But I really love Meg's answer to this, and I love Meg's heart, and I hope you will too. Well, I was saved about 10 years ago after my family moved to Florida. Um, as soon as I was saved, um, the Lord gave me a very deep hunger for his word. And so I started studying. I didn't really know how to study, but I started reading as much as I could, reading the scriptures and listening to many sermons a day. I just couldn't get enough. It was a couple of years after that that I had asked my pastor, I don't know how to go deeper. Like I didn't understand how to be discerning or how to figure out what the meaning of a passage was. And so he gave me some tips and some helps um, of going through like expository setting by Joel James, I do believe, and certain books to help me to um, understand hermeneutics a little bit. And I kept pressing him for more, for more information. And it just never seemed enough, never deep enough. Um, so at that time, he had mentioned that he was going to get his doctorate at the Master Seminary. And at that time, I think they were going to do an, an advanced Greek class. So he wanted to teach Greek in our church. So he said, I'm thinking about doing this. Would you be interested? And so a bunch of us, I think it was 15 of us, and we're talking about a young church plant, 15 people wanting to study Greek. Mm -hmm. It was very encouraging. And so we started that, um, and it died down very quickly <laughs> within a month. Um, it got, got a lot of excitement, a lot of momentum at first, but it died down. And at the end of it, it was me and my friend. We decided to meet at a coffee shop once a week to finish going through it. And it was definitely a case of the blind leading the blind. Um, we didn't really know what we were doing. We had questions and we would ask our pastor every now and then, but he had a lot going on. And so we finished it um, after that, then we didn't really know what to do. Um, I didn't really know how to apply it and I didn't know how to continue. I didn't know if it was enough to just do first year Greek and Time went by, I had more children, and I continued to lose all of my hard work for that year. So I would say that's how, that's how it started for me. Well, I should mention that the reason that I got back into Greek was because of my health issues. You know, kind of COVID hit, I was not doing very well, had a lot of downtime, so to speak, was less busy, waking up early, reading the word, and then I took Abner Chow's hermeneutic class that they were offering for free. So I took that and I devoured it within weeks. I just remember telling my husband this, I just, I've always just craved for that depth. And it's, mm. it's like my heart is being ripped open when I'm, I don't know if that makes sense, but reading and studying and understanding to that level and seeing such a high view of scripture being lifted up and that it really is sufficient for life and godliness. And the, mm. the way he taught that it was probably within a couple of days, I just praying that God would help me to know what to do with that burden of, mm. I don't, I don't know what to do with this. I have young kids. I have these health difficulties. I want the step, but I don't, I don't know where to go. Mm. And it was at that time that I saw Michelle from the community post it on Facebook about this group. 
I think I might have seen it before, but everything in that group, like I said, is so above my head that I didn't yeah. think it was for me. Yeah. But when I started looking into it, um, I think I contacted you that day, went on that wait list, and you had a call starting. And that very day, I joined because even in your, I just love the lecture or whatever you want to call it that you gave just about it's not about um, an intellectual pursuit, it's to transform you. Mm. It's for you to, as a tool to help you to love Christ more and to love his word. Mm. And I was just, that was it. If you're finding this story really helpful or encouraging or inspiring, I would love it if you could just hit the like button. That will tell uh, the person I'm interviewing that you really enjoy what they're telling us. And it also helps the YouTube algorithm so that other people find the story and also get the same encouragement that you're getting. Don't forget also to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't done so already. Let's get back into it. So Meg, even though she learned Greek and she kind of got to the end of beginning Greek, she wasn't able to sort of take it forward from that point on. And the question we need to really ask ourselves then is, is there any benefit? I mean, if that's all you were ever able to do, then maybe it's just not worth bothering at all. Because don't you, after all, have to get those real benefits of actually being able to go a lot further? I mean, I mean, is it worth it if all you do is just get through like half a chapter, half of the book of beginning Greek or, or even all of it? So what did, for Meg, what was the benefit of getting through that piece of uh, beginning Greek even though she wasn't able to fully you know, move on and make the most of that afterwards? Well, I could see a word. I had, still had my vocab for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so I could at least see a word and still understand some of the grammar concepts, like um, a tense, um, the mood, the voice. Um, I could still see how it was operating to a certain extent, though I still needed a lot of help. I did at that time also get Bible works. Um, so I used it as a tool that I could tell a little bit, but as time went on, I even, those things became fuzzy. Like what is, what's the significance of, um, you know, the, the perfect and the aorist and some of those things just became so foggy to me that it wasn't helpful any longer. It was more of a hindrance. So having been in the program now for, well, Meg's been in the program just over a year now, as the time of filming, as I'm filming this, this video was, the interview I had with her was a few months ago, but, now that she's been in the program, in fact, at the time that we filmed this with her, she'd been in the program for nine months. So where was she up to at that point? I assume that she's made some progress. She's improved her Greek and knocked the rust off a little bit. Uh, but where's she got to beyond that? Well, let's find out. Well, I felt like going through beginning Greek and the self-paced, especially the last half of it, I think I grasped less than I really did before going through it. I'm like, I think some of those concepts are really, I was really learning for the first time because I had better tools. I had people that I could ask questions to like in the community and you, and um, it just really sharpened. And it was, it was almost like taking it for the first time mm. in that. Okay. And so now you're reading through the text a little bit more. Yeah, so now I've joined the reading Greek class, which has been so helpful. And I need to keep in mind in, in that class that it's, like you said last night on the call, getting more efficient at reading the text because I want to exegete it. I want to look at every word, mm. parse it, and then see, the, you know, find the main verbal idea. And it's, it's, it's hard for me to um, go so fast, but yeah. I see the great value of it because when I do that, I'm picking up more and I'm seeing more. So I just have to remember to keep pressing forward, which I think is the whole <laughs> yeah. mantra of Greek, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the other question I think is always worth asking somebody is, what would you say to somebody who's interested in learning Greek? Would you know somebody who's a mother of four, who's super busy, what would they say to someone who wants to learn Greek but is really struggling with the time? Well, I asked Meg this very question and really I just love this answer. I would say this, and I actually wrote this down. <laughs> So if my relationship or if your relationship with the Lord Jesus is the most important relationship that you have, and if the Lord communicates to us only through his word, and if the Lord ordained that his scriptures be written down in Greek and Hebrew, then isn't learning that language in which God communicated to us to have a relationship with us worthy of our time. I really love the way Meg just answered that last question. 
Those four things, if your relationship with the Lord is the most important thing that you have, the most important relationship you had, and if the Lord communicates His Word, uh, His Himself, through His Word, and if He's decided and decreed to, to communicate His Word through the language of Hebrew and Greek, then isn't it worth learning that language so you can better understand how the Lord has revealed Himself to us this is just such a good line of reasoning. And I want to encourage you, if your desire is to know the Lord, grow in Christ's likeness, and begin to really plumb the depths of the Word of God, then there's nothing better to do that than to learn the original languages. And of course, Master Jesus me Greek is just Greek. But nonetheless, I would love it if you were able to join us in a few weeks. We're going to be opening up the membership, and if not earlier than that, and we're going to be starting a new beginning Greek cohort. And if you're interested in joining us for that, I would love to serve you uh, in that program. So go ahead, download the roadmap to mastery below, masterntgreek.com slash roadmap. That way you'll find out when that opening is, and we'll make sure that you get an opportunity to join us. And if you're interested, then... You know, by all means, I would encourage you to do that. Now, let me make one last comment about time. One of the comments that Meg made as we were working through that is that COVID hit and now she had more time. The key thing here is that it's very easy to be drawn into all these different things on a day-by-day -day basis. And I want to encourage you that if it's worthwhile to do something like this, as I think Meg rightly argued that it is, then you are going to want to give yourself somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes a day for five or six days a week. Now, for some people, it takes longer. Some people, it takes less than an hour, hence 30 to 60, uh, 60 minutes. But for most people, about an hour is a good amount of time. If you're able to do that, then you will be in a really good position to master the beginning Greek stage, move on to the reading Greek stage, and then we can just make it work beyond that. That much time is really necessary during the beginning Greek phase. Once you're through that, the time requirements drop significantly. So if you can do that for a little while, I mean, we don't have COVID hitting again, hopefully. If it's worthwhile, then it's worth taking the time to do this. It's only for a, a few months, let's say six months, and you'll be able to get through beginning Greek. And if that's you, I'd love to be able to serve you. Thanks again for watching. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you uh, hit the like button on this video and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get, uh, you know, get told when I release new videos. I look forward to serving you somehow in the future. Until then, keep taking small consistent steps toward mastery. We'll see you then.